Three shots, four par, I just do two, one putt, par four, birdie, woohoo, new driver, info, replace, M2, par five, fairway, what you fin do, think I'll try to get on, into, start right, good line, good view, it drew, shoot him at Gavin, two thumbs that's up high and two fingers. This episode is brought to you by our friends over at Swanee's. Clear your closet and get ready to upgrade your fall golf wardrobe over at swannies.co using the promo code SCREWS25. At swannies.co using the promo code SCREWS25. Celebrate par. It's essentially a subway for pizza. So you go in, pick all your toppings, and then put it, it goes into a stone fire grill. Is that like the Blaze pizza? Yeah, kind of. I just hate Blaze. Mod's way better, but. Is it? I had Blaze actually when I was. Oh, that's pretty. That looks good. That was really good. Yeah, <laughs> that does look good. <laughs> I got the whole nine yards on her. I got chicken, bacon, pepperoni, ham, so green some, pepper, jalapeno, like banana pepper, onion. I like that. Jeez, dude. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> Love that. I'm hungry. Man, man. you should let me know. We could have done this one in person. I would have flown up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, fly, I'll fly out for some mod pizza. Yeah, of course. It's so good. I love it. I only Smart. tried that Blaze. I was actually at Chad's game. Yeah, we same concept. I yeah. just don't like Blaze personally. Their crust is weird to me, but same concept. Okay. I'm a big deep, deep dish stuff crust kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you come to Detroit, we got deep dish. Okay, so let me ask you guys about deep Chicago. dish because I was in Chicago, right? So um, oh, I had it at one spot that was pretty good. I'd have to look it up, but the other one was not great. It was like the first time mm. I was there, but uh malnati's is that it malnati's you guys recognize i don't that? know is that like, or is it just a chicago thing probably just a chicago thing oh, we don't so, have it here so good though so good what uh what do you define good for a deep dish like what's good and bad about a deep dish like for you <laughs> well so i think it's just like the crunch right it's got to be able to remove yeah like crunch. it can't be doughy yeah yeah, yeah. see i'm the opposite i love it doughy okay yeah i don't i i just like pizza so much i don't care i just eat it well, so I go with the stuffed crust. You can't crisp up when it's uh, stuffed mm-hmm. crust. It's you, can't, be you do a stuffed crust, you don't want to be in a hotel room with me for the night, man. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a dangerous spot to be. I even had like two slices of pizza, and I am just ripping ass right now. It's tough. But, oh, man, Lord. So sorry, sorry, Shay. <laughs> sorry. But it's, uh, it's just, as I get older, man, it's just not agreeing with me as much, which is an unfortunate thing because we all like pizza, but... It's it's not a good scene though, unfortunately. No, no. It's you gotta, a me. You gotta be prepared. You just gotta be oh, prepared. Yeah. Once you're prepared, you're all right, but all right, I think we're okay. Oh, I've already clicked record. So we've recorded all of this. Perfect. Great start. Oh, get that pizza in there. Yeah, great start to the pod. <clears throat> Bryce knows we don't edit much. What kind of shirt you oh. got on there, Bo? Hey, you gotta wrap the swannies. <laughs> the swannies. <laughs> Look at that. Swannies. That's amazing. That. This is just a great opportunity to talk about today. They have a 35% off sale. Whoa. As you're listening to this podcast on Friday, November the 13th, 17th, it'll be though on Friday, Monday the yeah. 13th today. So um, yeah, we posted a story about it a few days ago and Swannies is having a, we're talking in the future right now. So this is hard to, yeah. this is hard to do, but oh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Black Friday sale starts November the 20th. So if you're still with us at this point, Black Friday sale, you can go over to swannies.co, sign up your email, and you'll get 35% off, and you'll look good as all three of us here. That's amazing. You look as good as the three of us. Sweet. All right, so we got Bo Blair. Welcome, Bo. What's going on, guys? I don't know Thanks if we left the me. pizza part in or not. We probably <laughs> did. We don't, uh, we don't do too much editing here, so hopefully you don't mind. But what defines a deep dish um, might be the title of the podcast. I don't know. <laughs> like what defines a good deep dish? Um, what, what, uh, I guess before we move on, but we have to finish this conversation because we didn't really like, you like doughy, you like stuffed crust, no crunch, no crunch, no crunch. Cause when More I look cheese, the better, when I looked it up, I don't I, hate that. I kind of respect that. Yeah. Yeah. When I looked it up and I was talking to Jake, uh, Jake, uh, more from, made from the range. He's from Chicago. So I was asking him a couple questions and mm-hmm. seeking some advice and, and, and whatnot. And. Yeah, the crunch seems to be something that people like. So that's a that's an opposite. Yeah, I wonder if that's like a like you're one side or the other, right? You're either a yeah. Well, we got I'm little Ca- little <laughs> yeah. Caesars here. Is they have a they have a lunch combo. It's six bucks. You get four deep dish squares and a drink. Great deal. They used but, to have uh, that you here. You can't beat that. No, and it's good too. Yeah. They used to have that one yeah. here, and they got and rid it, of it. 
I like theirs because their outside's got the mass, a lot of crunch, and then if yeah. you eat the inside doughy, so it's no. almost like that perfect combo for me. So big fan of that. Shout out Little Caesars. And uh, great time to go. Like I'd always go after shinny hockey, like midnight shinny hockey, and yeah, then you just I get go it there for lunch. Yeah, you just go with there with the boys, yeah. and then you got the you got food for the mm. evening. So, yeah. um, hey, y'all got to teach me some <laughs> hockey. We don't get that down here. <laughs> yeah. Bright, Bryce is your guy. Bryce is your guy. He's uh, played very high level hockey that's in the family. Um, I can play just. That's uh, awesome. My mom's short. from Minnesota, so we usually go up there every year to oh, go yeah. visit her family. And her best friend's husband uh, played in the NHL for a little while. Oh, did he? And him and his sons, dude, they take us out to the local rink. And it's nothing but just a frozen basketball court pretty much at the local yeah. park and they literally skate circles around us while our, my dad and I are just trying to hold ourselves up with sticks yeah it's <laughs> it's like it's a hard concept to learn like skating it really is and then once you like get a piece of it I think you're okay like once you mm-hmm. kind of like learn the the balance of it or like yeah. it's frightening though like like I used to teach ho- like hockey skills and stuff like that and some people are just terrified when you get on the ice, right? And it's not as slippery as you think. Like, you have, like, yeah. edges on your blades and stuff like that designed to, like, Bryce would know, burn into the ice and stuff like that. So it's, like, not that hard, but yeah, it's Yeah, I can terrifying. skate fine, and yeah. I can play field hockey fine, but you put those two things together, and that's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, I could, I could see that. that that's, that's tough, but... You only focus on one thing at a time. All right, so speaking of focusing... Like me and on, golf, so... <laughs> speaking of focusing <laughs> on things where... 161 episodes into this and we got Bo Blair. How are you doing, Bo? Maybe we could start off. We're a little bit into this one, but with an intro, um, skip any pizza stuff at this point. We can just uh, <laughs> talk about Bo Blair, the uh, the golfer, the ball player, kind of where we got to where we are here. Absolutely. Take it away, my friend. All right. Well, grew up in the very athletic family um, down here in Atlanta. Uh granddad played in the nfl both my dad and my uncle played d1 football so football was huge in my family growing up um and i played up until it was my sophomore year of high school and then just injury after injury and that was kind of a regret um of my athletic (laughs) lifelong career that i wish i honestly never played and it was a a stab through the heart with my family when i said that i was quitting to go play baseball (laughs) um but yeah, just injury after injury really started affecting my baseball career when that was kind of the one thing that through my entire life, everybody's like, oh, if this is going to be the one thing that takes you all the way. And thanks be to God, it took, I didn't get drafted. I didn't go play in the MLB or anything like that, but I got to play a little bit of professional baseball, uh, semi-professional out in Texas for a season before I came back to college. And we did a, uh, one, I had one semester left in my college career at Valdosta State in South Georgia and came back. We did a charity flag football event and tried to juke a guy and there goes my ACL. Uh, I've been there. Uh, so that's not fun. So hung up the shoes on that one and then really started pursuing this golf thing. And uh, it's kind of taken off from there and I've really been enjoying it. It's only, I've been in it for, this is my first official world long drive season as an amateur and i wanted to specifically stick with that as an amateur to kind of get my feet wet get the feels of everything and see how the whole process went um and we really enjoyed it and the numbers that i've been putting up um everyone was saying that i needed to go pro next season and i think that's what we're going to be doing nice did you have a golf background before or were you just baseball football uh, baseball and golf. Um, well, whenever I get around to golf, I did the. I was sponsored by US Kids. I did that whole tournament up until I was about twelve, mm-hmm. and then baseball really took over. Oh, okay. So I just played from time to time here on the weekends with my granddad and my dad. But, yeah, but you just weren't you weren't jumping in blind. You had a bit of a golf background then. Yeah, yeah, okay, nice. Right. Yeah, and golf and baseball do correlate a lot with each other. They definitely do, and you have like you. I didn't know if it was through baseball or not. That was obviously one of the questions I wanted to ask you, but you have like a very athletic ball player type of swing, right? So it's, mm. that translates very well to long drive. We've been mm. kind of hearing that from a, a lot of, a lot of guys. We, we had Ryan Gregnell on, he was talking to us about, it wasn't Seb Twaddle, but it was somebody that was a pro ball player from like Australia or something like that. And he's, I can't mm. remember who it is, or he's from New Zealand or something. Do you remember who that was, Bryce? And he's like one of the top rated I don't remember the name, but I yeah. do remember him talking about it. Yeah, yeah and how so one of the up and coming kids, right? Yeah, and he was talking about how a lot of their training, they're they're doing like swing training with a bat, like with a baseball bat. Yeah. So that became yeah, that's a big 
Yeah. Big difference between um, a regular a long drive swing is a lot more similar to a regular baseball swing than it is a normal golf swing. I mean, you're more on your back foot almost. You're not just follow through that smooth just golf swing. It is more of kind of a brutal kind of get as whippy as you possibly can and right. fire to the ball rather than just smooth and through. Yeah, that makes sense. I always found like uh, when I was just playing ball, like I was playing – like slow pitch up here. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's pretty big down where you are too. It's mm. massive up here. And, um, I was playing like a pretty high level up here and, uh, like you, I couldn't do both. Like it was like yeah. going from one swing on a Thursday night to like playing around Friday afternoon or Saturday with the guys and like trying to play golf is like, they just are not conducive really. You would think that they are, but they just kind of aren't and then I slid into a bag, dislocated my shoulder, similar like you. And I was like, I don't want to play. I'm just going to swing a golf club now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Same thing with hockey. Last time I played was ran into a guy, dislocated my shoulder. So I was like, okay, all these stars are aligning. We'll just play this no-contact sport golf here, and, and here we are. But Yeah, I'm sure that'll be the end of my uh, beer league career when I get hurt. Knock on wood, we're not going to. Mac but... here for Manscaped. Gentlemen, our friends over at Manscaped have been working night and day to bring you a below the waist grooming experience like none other with their brand new lawnmower 5.0 ultra we're talking about a next generation trimmer with interchangeable blade heads for whatever shave a mind can imagine ai is cool but i think this might be the best technology advancement the world has ever seen upgrade your grooming game to the ultra sphere this year by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping using the promo code OTS golf high tech for low prices manscaped OTS golf for 20% off plus free shipping. We'll see you in the ultra sphere. Too, you're too good though, Bryce. You got, uh, you can get out of the way of those things. I, yeah, I try to read the play yeah as well as they can but shit always happens so you never know i literally was like it was like at the end of a broken play like in front of the net and somebody just ran into me it was harmless like the guy had no idea what happened and i just I was like yeah exactly oh, i just it, just happened. it had happened a few times and i just skated off it was pretty it was a bummer because i was like i'm not gonna be able to it was a winter but i was like i think it was probably like january february and i was thinking to myself like i might not be able to start the golf season so that was kind of the idea i just sort of wrapped things up at that point but but um so you were playing, you were playing ball. That seems to be, you know, football, you had your granddad in the NFL, and then you decide too much of a contact sport. You went to baseball and then, you know, what, what kind of brought you to back to golf? Like, was there, was it just, you just wanted to just to stop playing ball? Was it, uh, was it that you ran into something? You just weren't interested in playing pro ball? Was there a combination of things or? Well, so I was kind of like you guys. So once I got done playing pro ball out in Texas, um, I came back and I did the whole men's league thing. It wasn't softball, but I mean, it was a bunch of just ex college, ex pro guys that got together and wanted to still play. That felt like we were still in our youth, right? <laughs> um, but it just the competitive side, what just wasn't doing it for me. Yeah. So then I did the um, WLD or um, the uh, was it the uh, ALD the stuff last year, right? Um, right. Because it was a PLD, PLDA, yeah, PLDA, PLDA before, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, did that kind of, I did that, did a few tournaments with them um, to really kind of get my feet wet in the long drive stuff. Um, met a couple of the guys that are doing that are competing in the open now. Um, and they're like, yeah, you need to come over and actually do the world long drive stuff. And I was like, all right, I'll try that out this season, do the amateur stuff and see how we do. Um, and I got hooked. I got absolutely hooked. The competitiveness, it's still kind of, uh, up and coming sport is growing extremely fast. So fast. Um, so so fast. fast. But, um, it's, it's just a big family almost like, even though I'm still kind of new to this and making my own name in this world, it's everybody's so nice. Everybody's extremely accepting of everybody and everybody wants everybody to do good and push themselves to the next level. And it's super cool to actually be a part of that to see this kind of grow into the next thing. Yeah. We've been, uh, we've been lucky. We've, we've chatted with, um, well, the longest, or uh, the best female hitter on the planet right now. Yeah, Monica Monica. Lavin. Uh, and, um, 
a sweetheart. Yeah. She's yeah. She's, she's great. She's awesome, man. Awesome. Love to see that happen. Like she's such a hardworking, mm-hmm. like she's so young. Like she's like, you know, we talked about like, we've talked about Kyle Berkshire and stuff a ton on the pod and like how much he's dominated before Martin kind of came up and Zach Holton mm-hmm. and Justin James and stuff. There's a couple, but man, she could dominate for a long time. Like she's so oh, yeah, She could she absolutely long dominate career ahead of herself. for a very long time. Right. So, yeah. and, uh, good friend of the pod, good friend of ours, Ryan Gregnell has been on a few times too. So we were kind of just talking about, um, all the different things. And when we're, there was like, do you remember the week of the ball speed record? It was like this one week of like, I think back to back to back to back. Martin <laughs> did it. And then I think Ryan did it. And then I think Kyle did it. And it was like, yeah, or maybe it was Kyle. Kyle. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was wild. Right. <laughs> yeah. But he was talking about how they're all like sending each other messages and stuff like that. Like calling each other on the phone, like talking about different things that they did to find success with that. Right. And, mm-hmm. and it's kind of cool in that way. And I, I think it's, um, the sport is growing incredibly fast, but it's like, there's maybe a couple guys making a living off of it right now. Like a couple pros making a living off. It. It's kind of, it's kind of not there yet. Mm-hmm. We're hoping it gets there, yeah. but I think that's part of it though. Like as a group, you all want to see, we, we all as golfers want to see the sport grow. Right. So it's like, that's how it's going to get to that, that platform. And now golf channels picked up the finals and stuff like that. That's how we're going to back, going to get it back to Christmas day. We're all sitting there watching, you know, yeah. long drive when we're watching the Jason Zubak back, back yeah. in the day. Right. So it's, right. uh, it's kind of cool to see. It's like, it's kind of cool to hear too, because mm-hmm. like you got Rory today calling, Patrick Canley, an idiot or whatever, shithead or whatever he called him. I yeah. can't remember what he called him. Yeah, but. There's, like, there's no bad blood in yeah. there. Yeah, I like that. I like that. If you, like, I don't I don't know. It'd be, like, impossible to find anybody. I haven't, like, heard anybody in the sport that you could have bad blood with. It'd be so mm-hmm. hard to. Wait until I start hitting the ball for him. Yeah, like, Bryce <laughs> Bryce does hit the ball I'll a long way. I'll start tossing a rock, yes. But he, uh, Leave it to the hockey player to come in and talk some. <laughs> yeah yeah i'm pretty sure you challenged ryan like right off the hop and yeah yeah it, i did i said give me three months but it, I, I don't know there, there was, was never a rumor that someone started i don't know who it was but it was, yeah there was never any uh came across my desk and i had to talk about it any footage of that nothing came out so we start we you kind of take the jump you start um you know in the amateur long drive this year and like you said you're gonna look at the pro next year so you you know we're a few events in eventually you kind of get to Memphis and ultimately you become the champion. Can you kind of walk us through like the first couple of events and then when you, you know, get to Memphis and what made that kind of successful in those first couple of events for you? Yeah, absolutely. So the Memphis term was actually my second tournament that I ever did. So the first one was down in Hope Sound and that was the first time ever playing in front of, in front of a crowd in front of that many other competitors. And that first time I got it there on the tee box, I was up there just shaking <laughs> and trying to put that tee on the ball. It literally fell off five times before I could put on that first ball and hit it. And that first ball, I completely, I can't remember, I want to say I just absolutely shanked. It probably went about 50 yards straight down to the dirt to the left. Oh, oh it was brutal. But settled in, took a couple deep breaths, um, kept going from there. Uh, was talking a lot with Andrew Iger. Uh, who I think, I'm think i pretty sure he won that tournament. I mean, he just won yep. amateur overall. He's a stud. Um, but yeah, he kind of calmed me down a little bit, uh, kept me breathing, set everybody saw how nervous I was. It was just like, just calm down. Everybody's got these jitters. Even it doesn't matter how many tournaments that you do, you always get these jitters, but calm down, came in fifth overall of that tournament. Uh, then the next one I competed in was the Memphis tournament and we ended up taking the win home on that one. Nice. What was your winning ball in Memphis? Oh, three what was it 358 i think we had that entire tournament was like 20 plus mile per hour headwinds just oh, into right into us oh um, it was brutal so the um you to get a decent flight it was definitely not one that you can get up sure. in the air you almost had to keep it down under and hit just stingers all day mm. and that was that was the only way that i ended up bringing that home is because for some reason usually i hit mine just sky high but these are we just kept yeah. it low and, and it's intimidating hitting into the wind. I feel like it's such a men- well for me. It's such a mental block knowing that winds in, and I hit pretty spinny ball, so I know it's just gonna balloon up in the air. Yeah. And like just the mental like aspect of committing to a shot in the wind, I feel like it's difficult. 
Oh, it's, <laughs> it's tough. It's definitely a big mental block that you got to work through. Mm-hmm. I still, uh, I remember because we, we actually had Andrew on just after that one, I think. Um, it might have been after Hope Sound, or it might have been just after he won the uh, the World Championships, or just before. And I, was I think it was along. after Hope Sound. Yeah, I was kind of following along, and and I I recognize your name was up there. I can't remember what the numbers were. Don't quote me on this, but I think you guys were the two. You guys had two balls over. You're the two guys over 370, I think. Yeah, I think is, I was 374. He was 378. Yeah, which is uh, in the win too, which is pretty impressive, man. That's pretty wild. <laughs> so, are you um? Are you like getting into the gear yet? Like, are you are you getting deeper into that? Was that kind of something that was always a part of? Like, when you play junior golf, like you probably tinkered a little bit, but is it something that you're starting to get more involved in, with now? Oh yeah, absolutely, hundred um, percent. Man, I'm always trying to look for new sponsors to help me out through it. I just had to buy a new. Uh, that's one thing I think I've realized. Um, uh, just practicing every week. Um, right. I practice at the Mall of Georgia at the Dick Sporting Goods. I got a nice uh simulator in there and uh just the club head speed that i've been putting up my ball speed has been way down so i mean i just realized i've probably put three four five thousand <laughs> balls through this one driver that i have so all these tournaments i've done i've walked up with one driver and everybody's been making wow. <laughs> yeah if my driver broke i'd be screwed but That's after crazy. putting all the balls through it i think it's died a little bit because just my numbers aren't Mm-hmm. it's not like a bat eh? it's like you know when you're you're you would know like hitting a bat <clears throat> yeah the last yeah. like two or three balls are amazing and you're like i've had that in my head before and i'm like this thing's about to go i'm like i know like yeah. it it gets really hot and then it just mm-hmm. it cracks or whatever right so yeah, it goes away it's yeah done. not like a driver head unfortunately i think just the particles probably fall apart in there you guys are putting so much pressure on it but mm-hmm. but yeah so starting to kind of look into it a little bit more yeah, so I just ordered a new head from a one-stop power shop. <laughs> Not cheap, no. <laughs> by any means. But um, hopefully we'll start getting some numbers correlating to what my uh, club head speed has been. Well, are, you a, uh, are you a whiffy shaft guy or are you a really stiff shaft guy? Getting into that. So um, I had a LD30 from Kinetics, um, mm-hmm. which is pretty stiff for what they have and then when we were at king's port i picked up a ld10 which is their more whippy one and it is tough tough, tough yeah to time it but for yeah sure. once you, i'm finally starting to get the hang of that and we're putting up the same numbers that i was with the ld30 uh with 20 30 less effort right nice so, so i'm excited to actually dial that thing in completely but what is that like what is the that you're trying to do um so I guess anybody might be new to to the pod or checking it out for the first time with with pro long drive or amateur long drive. You get six balls, right? Correct. So you need to. The concept is you get six balls. You have um, one thirty minute thirty. Two thirty. Two thirty. So you got two thirty, um, and you got to put one in the grid at minimum. Like you gotta you gotta make a number. That's right? all you so, need is one. Yeah. I can't tell and, you how many times I've been beat by one ball. <laughs> yeah, and you want the uh, and you want it to be good, right? So right. The idea is that's transforming in the world long. Like, I think the idea was there was always like a bit of a whippy shaft or a stiff shaft kind of argument and stuff like that, mm-hmm. right? So as a golfer, with your swing speed getting higher and higher, you're going to hit a stiffer shaft, like a 7X mm-hmm. or something like that, 6X, something like that, right? So yeah. um, when you are in long drive and you want to maximize like the amount of effort, there's a lot mm-hmm. more whip, like... Um, I don't think like auto flex whip, I don't think, but it's, it's somewhere in that range. Right. So is it, is it something like it's all about timing and are you finding it like, it's gotta be hard. We talked about how you're kind of trying to hit up on the ball and you're kind of loading off the back foot like you would like baseball. Mm -hmm. Are you finding it hard to like get all the way back there sometimes like versus an actual golf swing? Is it becoming completely different for you or? I feel like it would be so tough. I feel like it'd be so it, tough it, to not it, snap it was hook a the little thing, right? Tough at yeah. First, but being honest, I don't play a whole lot of golf. I wish I had time to play more. Yeah. <laughs> so having that transition more towards the kind of more long drive slash baseball swing was not a huge adjustment for me, and I think it's showing more on the golf side than it is on the long drive side. Right. I suck at golf, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm decent. I have days where I'll be like mid upper seventies lower 80s and then um then there'll be days where i'll be hanging out with my boys we'll shoot a 98 
99 and be like, well, this is a beer day for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've been there. Both of us have yep. been there. We know the, we know those numbers. I was there this year. Yeah, yeah. Bricer's got one of the uh, the largest variants in golf history. I think back to back. Yep. It's uh, <laughs> it's I I have like maybe qu- quite possibly the highest uh, in, one in one round. Like I got a thirty three forty eight. So oh, nice. it's it's <laughs> shooting an eighty one with a forty eight on the back is yeah, is tough. That doesn't really... compare to my sixty six ninety two. No. <laughs> no, not quite so so we know like that's golf though right and that's why oh, yeah. we're like i said we're 161 episodes into this and we can just talk to anybody about golf because it or anything golf related because it's the most i don't know i don't know what word to use it's like, frustrating it is it's frustrating, frustrating man <laughs> it's like such a beautiful sport at times and then it's so criminal at other times but it's mm-hmm. it's fun Both other it's, times, yeah. yeah we love it we love it that's why uh that's why we got it right so and you'll never beat it that's why you keep coming back. You think you can, you never yeah. will. Yeah, you, it's that one shot. You get one good shot. And you're like, I can do this. Let's yeah, back exactly. <laughs> well, it's it's infectious, right? We talk about that all the time because my game is kind of more or less like the good shots Facing and like that one shot. Yeah, that's kind of it, right? Or trying to hit shots that I have no business hitting, and then you hit it one time, and you're like, I'm gonna do that again, and then mm. that was your one time. That was it. Like you can hit it a thousand more times it's not coming again it's never gonna happen so <laughs> i said i was like i sent i saw this reel today um and i sent it to a buddy of mine because we were we were playing bryce so we were on 13 after that weird par four down by mm-hmm. the houses so we're on 13 it's a long one into a headwind and uh the guy i'm playing with has got like 265 or something like that into this headwind it's probably playing i don't know 290 plus maybe who knows it's a little up and so we got buddies on the green and the one guy in our cart, Josh Bailey's brother, says, "Oh, like you'll never get there, Johnny. Like it's it's fine. Like go ahead and hit." And he hits, and he just like just like absolutely pipes it, and he like hit it right over top of one of the guy's heads. Or it was just not it. <laughs> so, but he's like, I hit a good shot, but he felt terrible. So it is funny because <laughs> I sent him that reel earlier. I sent him that, and I was like, but it's it's kind of like if you didn't if those guys weren't on the green that would have been a shot where you're like oh my god i want to chase like hitting the ball yeah. that well every time i just hit it <laughs> you know 290 into the wind or something like that with a three wood but it's it's hard man. it's hard to kind of come up with that stuff but um so well if we can get into like long drive a little bit more if you don't mind like when how many events have you been in now so only three okay so yep. when when you're at the event like can you kind of walk us through maybe like your second or third one when you're feeling a little bit more comfortable, like do you got a warm up involved? Can you kind of walk us through like when you're approaching your set, you know, going through that set, kind of fulfilling like, you know, whatever the preparation is that you have brought with you to that? Yeah. Um, one thing that has really worked for me and like, like I told you before, like the breathing just really helps <laughs> trying to really just calm yourself. But at the same time with me as ADD as I am, <laughs> I try to distract myself. I try not to think about going into that set at all. I try to completely just wipe it out of my mind until I'm literally putting that ball on the actual tee. Um, so I'll, I'll be sitting there. Usually they'll have a tent or something that the guys, all the guys are hanging out under, uh, getting ready to get called up for their round. So I'll be shooting the shit with all the guys under there, trying to just get my mind off of what's about to happen. Because if you let it get to you, it really gets to you. Yeah, I've been there on the first tee before. Don't worry. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta hit into a par three now in my club. It's tough, man. Like just, yeah, that's brutal. It's so tough, but I mean, so, it isn't, it isn't, because like you also don't hit driver off the first tee, you know. So that's it's kind of like a little bit of a perk, but. But you can make a five pretty easy. Like, pretty quick, like, oh yeah. So it's not, uh, it's not, not, and then it's a hard par four at the next hole. It's a tough starting combination, but so are you making, like. You know, okay, so we talk about, like, hitting on the range or whatever. So, obviously, you're there hitting warm-up balls. You mm-hmm. kind of take what you got that day, like, and, in, in, like, if you're hitting, like, a little fade or something like that, like, in, or, or are you kind of trying to shot shape? Or what, like, what's your kind of dynamic when you're when you're warming up? Yeah, try, you want to try to play the wind as much as you possibly can. So, like I was saying, when we were in Memphis, yeah. we had that tailwind. So, you want to try to keep that ball as low as you possibly can. So, when I was in warm-ups, I was hitting nothing but just 40, 50 foot just. Right. He raws just straight out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're actually in competition and you're taking your full swings as hard as you can, yeah, they're going to get a little bit higher, but you're still going to be anywhere from 30 to 
80 feet lower than the other guys and that's mm -hmm. where the wind is the slowest and you're going to get a little bit more distance a little bit more rollout um when we were in kingsport we had a pretty strong left to right and um that really worked with me because i always play just a small little baby fade and and i mean i i didn't have a single ob set that entire tournament um and one was it three out of the five five out of the seven i only had two two sets out of the entire time that i didn't win up until mm. i got eliminated so when you say an ob set that means over six yeah. okay yeah. yeah all right so, and yeah, just hit all of them out of bounds yeah so yeah. and you know again anybody might be new the grid's 40 yards wide i believe uh they, they kind of vary um, okay so i want to say i want to say the average is 65 so they're in, anywhere from 55 to 75 if i'm not okay missing. all right but i haven't done any of the uh tournaments out west yet i've only done the east coast tournaments so i want to say kingsport was 55 okay all right, all right which is still pretty small especially considering on like how much spin you guys put on that ball if you miss hit it or anything like oh, when you're 350 you're plus grid, yards out yeah. That, yeah your grid is yeah. <laughs> well yeah. too like when you look at like all the photos of mesquite and stuff like that that they had last year that's when that kind of mm -hmm. sticks out because that's when bryson was there it was like a big thing it was like a big mm -hmm. jolt to the long drive community and like the grit just doesn't look that big it might be because yeah. there's mountains in the background and stuff like that but it's just like it makes it look pretty narrow right and mm -hmm. um nice. like that extra three to four inches on the end of the driver is like it's not there for control it's there to hit the ball as far as you can right yeah. like that's the idea of it it's you're, you're trying to you know smash the ball as far as you possibly can within that grid so right. um like we've seen that like even kind of tracking ryan and stuff like that we've seen some ob sets before and it's it's gotta be frustrating man but it's it's pretty common it's not uh it's not uncommon that it's that one ball and that one ball that gets you through like how many times you've seen a set where somebody is one for six and they got the longest ball right it's just like i mean that's how kyle berkshire just won the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> over yeah. five and it's literally his last ball the entire tournament put him yeah. up has he, i mean he's i won, feel like going he's won two that way like, now yeah yeah i think he's I won like two. OB set, i feel like ob sets are kind of like striking out in baseball like you don't want it but it happens like yeah. pretty frequently you know oh yeah yeah. Oh, yeah, we could talk about about a I don't know a thousand and one analogies of what an OB set would be, right? Yeah. In, in golf, it's <laughs> like with any sport really, but it's just uh, it's part of it, right? It's part of the sport. It's part of like what you go through, and the idea is to try and like you know play the grid. It's kind of like when we see Bri when we saw Bryce and he's going six for six every time, right? And that's like a pro golfer who's paid to you know yeah, hit the fairway, paid millions of yeah. balls to, uh, dollars to hit the fairway, right? So it's kind of hard for that, but it's. I don't know. The, the sport is like ever evolving, like we talked about. Right. So, um, if we can get into like this year a little bit, we're going pro now taking it to pro side. So what does that look like for you, Bo? Are you, uh, you trying to kind of adjust things? You're trying to practice a little bit more, trying to focus a little bit more on it. So a lot of what I'm working on this off season is really just speed stuff. Um, cause like with my practicing on the simulator that I practice on, you can't adjust it 55 yards wide. Um, so if I can keep anything on the grid with that, when I come, when it comes to competition, it's anywhere from 10 to 20 yards wider. I mean, it only makes it easier. So it definitely helps doing that. So really when it comes down to getting ready for next season, it's just speed, just try to get as fast and faster, faster, faster. I want my goal before next season is to start getting into the two twenties. So which, where are we at? Where are we at now? Where, where are we peaking right now? So the fastest I've ever has uh two seventeen. Okay. But I'm like stuck at like the. 210 to 213 range consistently which i do honestly think um it is my driver just kind of being a little dead because my clip head speed i'm anywhere i'm averaging for uh 146 to 148 and I'm that's so fast it's crazy so fast. for any reference i hit the ball pretty far and i was on a track man the other day and my highest ball speed was 186 so that's fast, which though, is dude. like still good yeah but yeah. i mean it's not like a consistent it's just that was my biggest no that's i felt the middle of the face and i was like that's all i got yeah so, two years ago i was like 185 to 195 i didn't top 200 that's... until i started my competitions last year yeah my driver's also only 44 inches i play a really short driver so yeah. i'm losing a lot of speed there but that's still okay. like 214 miles an hour is fastball speed <laughs> so you've gained like this year bo you've gained like 20 
Oh, roughly, yeah. That's unreal. That's, that's I've actually been wild. able to put in the time and effort and the. Yeah. It's really the stretching and actually getting the full extension on the way back, mm-hmm. giving your club as much possible time as you it can to speed up. That was do a big you do, thing. Do you use any uh, training aids and stuff for speed? Um, do a, a few band work, some band okay. work and stuff, but not as much as I'd like. No, like swing sticks or anything. No. No, not really. Not mm-hmm. as much. I'm trying to build the legs. That's that's where mm-hmm. a lot of power comes from. Is your legs from. I mean, you see the guys like Kyle and all them. They really the like transfer, jump. Yeah. yeah, they jump off, off their front foot. So the stronger you can make your legs, the more pop you're going to have off the ground and that more whip you're going to get with the club. So mm-hmm. the faster and harder you're actually going to be able to hit it. So it really comes – same with pitching and baseball. I mean, it comes all from your legs. And then after that, you got to focus on hitting the middle of the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you uh, what do you think about the pump, Bo? Like, that's something that's kind of been brought in with, I think, mainly like uh, Seb's doing – like, he kind of – brought it in when he was really like pumping up big ball speed numbers but what's your thought on like the pump at the top let me tell you i tried it once and i completely missed the ball and about blew out my back <laughs> so it doesn't work for me yeah it's like one of those recipes it's not gonna work for everybody right obviously no. it's it's working for him and and for i think martin was doing it a little bit or trying it so and like we've seen in golf too we've seen like guys like victor hovland do it um that's where the kind of the conversation came from is when we first talked about it but Cam young doesn't pump but he pauses yep yeah so there's it's it's definitely there it's it, it but it's i always feel like i don't know there's um it's got to be hard to like fully restart and that's something that I don't know how old Seb is, but as you get a little bit older, I feel like that'd be something that's really hard to do, man. Like it's to, to be able to kind of restart at the top or regain that speed. I don't know what the theory is that he has behind mm-hmm. it, but obviously it's working for him. But but that also goes back to what we've talked about in previous episodes of swing your swing. You know, if it's working, just you swing your swing, you know, mm-hmm. no need to no need to get too crazy. Yeah, it's all about it's all about rhythm and for somehow that rhythm works for him. Mm hmm. So with like the training bow, like obviously it's something where we look at long drive and like I think of our buddy Ryan, who is obviously like a specimen, right? He's done a lot of yeah. bodybuilding in his past. He's done powerlifting. Um, it's like training is a big part of life. You talk about trying to build a lower body and stuff like that. So have you changed your kind of fitness routine from you're an athlete, you've been a pro athlete. Have you changed your fitness routine to kind of cater directly to long drive now uh it's actually kind of going back to how i trained more when i was actually playing baseball um because like with pitching because i was a pitcher um it like i said it all comes from your legs all your power comes from the legs so when it comes to upper body you want to try to keep your upper body as mobile as possible and as flexible as possible you don't want the your big deep body muscles to really get in the way um so that, that's a, that's a big thing that I'm trying to go back because when I got out of baseball, I started kind of getting into the bodybuilding kind of stuff. I had a bunch of friends that did it from uh, high school and college, so I was like, All right, I'm gonna try to get into this and see what happens. Um, but as it took too much of a toll on my body back in college, my sophomore year, I almost died because my kidneys failed. So oh, it was wow. yeah, it was just too taxing on my body. Um, so started getting the golf thing even more. That was another reason why I really wanted to get into it. Um, so trying to get back to my baseball workouts and really getting my legs big. So do you think that there's like any certain type of sport that would lend better to long drive than others? Like we kind of talked about how baseball does. The swing is very similar. Um, but like, do you think, are you seeing, uh, we talked about obviously all the swing training and stuff with baseball bats. Are we seeing like a correlation with those two sports? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So for you, it's got to be uh, it's got to be easy then, right? It's got to be. <laughs> it's just so easy. It's just so easy to go six for six or something like that. But it do you, do you like we're noticing like a correlation with those guys? Oh, obviously, there's a lot of like high end ball players coming over and playing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we're seeing like a lot more athletes where we're not just seeing like mass monsters go out and hit a golf ball now. It's like mm-hmm. becoming athletic. Like when you look at guys like obviously looking at guys like Ryan and Kyle and Seb and you know mm-hmm. everybody's everybody's in great shape right so um 
They're huge too. A lot of guys are yeah, huge. I mean, right? they, so, I feel, yeah. I feel, I'm six one, two fifteen, and I feel small around these guys. <laughs> yeah, like I've got a bodybuilding background too, and I don't really carry it anymore. But I still got some size, and it would just, I would feel like a dwarf there. I just feel so yeah, small. I'm waiting it's, for a hockey player with two tree trunks of legs to get into this. Yeah, with, yeah. The, with the good <laughs> hip mobility too, and I we got to get like, Sid in there to, uh, to just, someone. just train him how to swing a golf club and like. Yeah, he's got yeah. massive, massive. I was thinking range. more like someone like uh, Tom Wilson or something with the height and the length. Yeah. And just get him just beating golf balls. I think he could have a chance. Just to see, just to see how it goes. <laughs> but so, yeah, I mean, I was up at, uh, I went up to Worlds in Atlanta pretty early. I got there just about before anybody else did just to hang out. I didn't have anything else going on because it's not too far from my house. Um, but I got up there and I was hanging out with Bobby Ray and uh, Gabby Powell and all them. And I was standing next to Bobby like, Holy crap, his arms are as big as my legs. <laughs> That's another Swanee's guy, Bobby Ray, man. Oh, yeah. Another Swanee's guy. Yeah, I want to cut off my sleeves, but I'm like, yeah, I got a lot of catching up to do before that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I love it, man. He just looks like he's there to have a good time, man. But, man, he can pound the ball. Like, he can absolutely mm-hmm. pound the ball, right? But are we, uh, what are we, what are we hoping to do for this year, Bo, when you're talking about, like, you know, going pro? Where are we hoping to uh, to see yourself this year? We talked a bit of numbers and stuff, but how do you want that to translate into the pro ranks? Do you have any like goals of where you want to reach, like you know, a certain top number in the world, or you want to be you know kind of floating around the top in some events? You want to win? You're you've been a pro athlete. I know you're gonna say you want to win, but what's the uh, what's what's kind of the goal? What's what's our goal for this year? Um. Overall, just at the whole season, I'd like to end the season in the top 20. That's kind of my yeah. goal because obviously it'll be my first season competing in the Open. So something that's, I think, I think personally, especially with my numbers that I've been putting up, is attainable. Um, but we just got to put it to well too like <laughs> yeah like any sport though it's it's like the consistency in long drive is hard and like it's it's the same as like in golf or anything else but like mm-hmm. you know you see guys like kyle like was just kind of dominating the sport for years and then like maybe a couple things happen within his swing or something like that and it's it's hard man it's hard like you just get kind of passed by for a couple weeks and then now he's back right so it's it's got to be one of those things where like consistency is it too right and i think having like a a uh, professional like sports background or being an athletic you know person you're you're gonna have that ability to hopefully be consistent that's what's gonna kind of keep those mm-hmm. numbers and then when you're there right it's like we talked about anybody can win it's everybody's mm-hmm. hitting the ball you know yeah. 400 yards it's it's just kind of depending on where you hit it where you hit it on the screws right so that's right that's a good plug no that's yeah, cool Brady, bro. So I, was all right, <laughs> no, I got it yeah that's all right but it's it's kind of like at that point, anybody can anybody can truly win, right? The the variance between hitters is not much at that a at, little, at your level, right? Yeah. It's just top twenty. I mean, you got you got Kyle Martin, um, and like just a couple other guys that are honestly just head above everybody else, head and shoulders above yeah. everybody else. And the, but the top, I'd say top fifteen, maybe even a little bit more than that, has a chance of winning any tournament on any given day. Yeah. Yeah, but even the top, the top few guys you mentioned, they have one bad day. I mean, they're getting uh-huh. beat. You know, like you yeah. never yeah. know. I feel like that, like Max said, the margin between everyone is so little. It's like it's like PJ Tour golf. Anyone can win at any yeah. time because it's just they're all that good. Yeah. So I think it's very similar in long drive. You all. just you catch one on the screws, like Max said, and it's it's soaring through that air. So love that. Well, we just saw that with Camille Vijegas, right? Like it's mm-hmm. like beating a exactly. like it was a Bermuda Butterfield, like. Yeah, maybe not the strongest field in in the PGA Tour season, but some some great golfers there, like yeah. some top top players. Pendy was there. Pendy was playing well, and like, yeah, winning an event like that's impressive, right? It's just uh, it's just kind of like showing up, giving it your best, and mm-hmm. I think I think it could be there, right? It can be there for anybody. Also, really, so. shout out George Bryan too. What a what a yeah, um, that was cool. That was cool. So. Cool start to his career it was you, awesome you've got a bit of a media background Bo. do you follow like any of the youtube golf as much as i can yeah I say. i'm it's so hard. busy these days yeah, so much content man i know mm-hmm. it's, it's tough to actually pick out a few people that you can kind of follow hardcore and actually get their entire story rather than just kind of skipping over everybody mm-hmm. yeah i definitely uh it's kind of easy to watch george and wes they're both so good 
Grant's like that Grant Horvath's mm-hmm. so good to watch, like mm-hmm. so much fun to watch. Um, but yeah, kind of seeing both those guys and Wes was up against it too. George played well, like the first two rounds, but Wes had to go. Yeah, I think Wes he went was seven four or eight over deep. after the first round, yeah. I think, and then just went low the rest of the tournament. Yeah, which is pretty cool to uh, to make the cut. And then did they end up playing the third round together? I know that they. I'm not they, sure if I. They were. They had the same score. They're like one shot off. I wasn't. They had to yeah. been close to each other on holes, but I don't know if they played together or not. I'm not sure. Yeah, it'd be it'd be pretty cool to see that. But do you see like I know Kyle does a little bit of content, Bo. Do you see that kind of playing in? I know there's like we've chatted with Avery a little bit. Like she was gonna come on the pod, but it's uh, there are quite a few people. Martin does a ton of content. Like, are are you seeing like more and more space for that with long drive? Like, are we seeing more players that are able to? to kind of like supplement their their income and stuff that way you think oh uh, yeah absolutely um i mean i don't know if y'all have seen it but what is it called i'm drawing a blank let me pull it up real quick um but they they have a new long drive reality show coming out here soon y'all oh, really? seen that yeah oh, I um, it's uh there's six guys so it's bobby gabby um Oh shoot! Let me let me try to find this. I'll, I'll pull it up real quick. Um, Is it almost um, like the big break, but long drive, kind of? Kind of. Um, but <laughs> with the characters on it, so it's yeah, it's Bobby, um, Gabby. Oh, I feel like I uh, did Kathy, see something about Josh this. Koch, um, Martin. I think there's one other. Um, but yeah, it was like six people. Gosh dang it, I can't find it. Where'd it go? I feel like I did see something about it though. Is it gonna be like a YouTube release? Do you know? I think I think it's actually gonna might be on TV. That's what awesome. It seems man. like, but I haven't gotten a whole lot of info on it yet. Well, and like, there's so many like uh, like misfit personalities in Long Drive. I love that. Right? It's oh, like yeah. there's there's so many like like maybe misfits not the right word, but it's like there's so many cool characters in the sport. Right? Where it's right. like it's an it's a sport based on entertainment, and that's what like we're all watching to see somebody hit the ball further than the next person, the next player, whatever it is. Right. So it's it got a different feel than golf. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of cool. It'd be cool to see a lot of uh, more kind of characters and like their, how they are, like their mannerisms and stuff like that. And, and then, cause when they get to the grid, it's, it's all a little bit different, right? Everybody's like, you know, you see Kyle, he's like a really like reserved dude by the looks of it. Yeah. I've never met him in person, but like when you see his videos, he's pretty reserved. And then man, out of nowhere, he's just like yeah. <laughs> a little ball of fire. Yeah, he yeah. Explodes. <laughs> I yeah <love> exactly. <laughs> I love it. Man. So and that'd be pretty cool. And I think that developing the sport is, is important right now. I think it's, you know, one of the faster growing sports out there right now. It looks like it's, uh, you know, gaining a lot of momentum. It's getting a lot of quality athletes in it and it's getting a lot of airtime which is cool too right so yeah. it's fun too it's just fun as golfers to watch right so but uh Absolutely. yeah golf yeah. ball whacker guy everyone likes watching guys just hit the ball a mile yeah exactly right so hopefully you know hopefully we we kind of see it continue to grow and it sounds like it there's you know more time on the golf channel and stuff like that the youtube channel is like blowing up like i'm looking at sometimes there's you know three, four, five, six, ten thousand 10,000 people watching the finals and stuff like that, which mm-hmm. is really cool to see. So I remember watching like Ryan in one of the first ones and there's like 60 people watching it. So it's kind of mm-hmm. cool to see. <laughs> it's cool, man. It's cool to see how much it's grown in a year. And I think mm-hmm. we had Ryan on right after Mesquite and last year. And that was when Bryson came from the uh, Ryder Cup. And mm-hmm. he was kind of the hottest thing in golf at the time because he was playing really well. And he was like, he had that like Thor type, when he drove the green, he had the yeah. putter in his hand, yeah. and he was like, "Yeah." So it's like, and then he stops off the PJ, like he hops off the PJ at, uh, at Mesquite to go go hit some golf balls, right? And he played pretty. I think he finished eighth. Like he hit pretty well that time too. Yeah, that's so solid. Yeah, yeah, which was great, right? So, um, but it was like consistency. He's just beaming them down the middle of the fairway, and he's not missing, right? So, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, I think the sport's growing. It's really great, man. It's fun to watch and. And uh, kind of looking forward to seeing how how Bo does, man. You got a you got a name for it, right? It's like Bo Bichette up here playing with the Blue Jays. We got Bo Blair. I love it, man. That's a good athlete's <laughs> name. That's a great athlete's thank name. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I appreciate you kind of taking the time, Bo. Hopefully, we wouldn't take uh, too much of your time here tonight. But I um, yeah, I'm looking forward to kind of tracking and and seeing how the the events go. Are you are you hoping to play the full schedule next year? 
I'm hoping so, but let's yeah. say I need I need to find some new sponsors. Um, help me get through the season because it's definitely not cheap. Yeah, it's man. Definitely not cheap. Yeah, the travel and everything involved. That's something that mm-hmm. Ryan and I kind of dug into a little bit, and the cost of everything just to be, you know, a professional lawn driver is is, is hard, man. And if you're not kind of one of the top one, you know, hitters in the world, then you're kind of in the red every week too right and if you're not winning you're in the red but at least the prize pools are are getting a little bit higher there's a little bit more money and you know with that come sponsors and stuff like that right so um that's kind of the idea of us like we just love talking golf and whatever it may be so (laughs) absolutely hopefully somebody comes across this and uh yeah give Bo a chance man if uh yeah you look good in the swannies right so maybe uh (laughs) maybe we get something going there swannies or something who knows right so but uh, really appreciate the time, Bo. This was great, man. Hopefully we can kind of have you back as, as maybe you do a couple events and get your feet wet in the pro circuit. And, uh, yeah, we'd love to have you back. And hopefully we'll be at some of the events too. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, crazy. absolutely. Yeah, y'all definitely need to come out and actually set up and do a podcast at one of the events. That would be sick. Yeah, was- we – we got to we gotta get a little booth or something like that, Bryce. I think we'd have fun with it, man. I know the Country Club yeah. of Jason guys did that, and then they, they kind of uh, they kind of got the away from it. The live commentary? But... Yeah, yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll, we got to get to one of these events. So I think like the home run fun. derby. Back, 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 back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I love that. I love that. So, But uh, do you know, Bo, off, like, I'm kind of putting you on the spot. Do you know how many events there are in the schedule next year? I want to say it's eight or nine. Um I feel like they I haven't, feel like they haven't released the yeah. new schedule yet, um, or if they have, I haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, I think it's eight or nine. I think there's two or three more than the amateur right. every season. So you're wanting to play the full schedule. That's the idea, I, right? That's the plan. That's yeah. The plan. So, well, and, and too, like you said, to to get the points and to to try and get into that it's kind of one of those things because you got to like invest in yourself so to speak mm-hmm. you gotta you gotta put that money in and you gotta you know to be able to get into that top 20 or whatever it is top 15 top 10 to to be able to get those sponsors to be able to help out right so um but all the best Bo, man hopefully we didn't take too much of your time really appreciate you coming on this was this was great appreciate man we'd love to uh would love to have you back i appreciate the appreciate the time we'd love to uh to get you back and kind of chat and see how the uh the season goes maybe mid next year or something absolutely I'll be here. You just got you guys let me know. I will, man. I'll I'll reach out to you. I always love kind of looping back and seeing how things go. And now we got another dog in the race, right? So when Bryce yeah, and I are kind of watching it, uh, it's kind of nice to be like, oh yeah, all right, we know Bo. Okay, we got another guy there, and uh, Monica Andrew's been on the pod before. Uh, Ryan, we've got a we got a handful, right? So it's uh it's cool, man. Four or five now. Yeah. yeah, it's great. So, but all the best, Bo. Thanks so much, man. We'll uh, we'll do it again sometime. Awesome, guys. Sounds like a plan. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. He's out in my ball and of course I tee up I lose the ball and I re up I miss the fairway, I probably end up in the ocean Or maybe the beach And I'm on a part five and I'm finna go reach it Second was blind, I see it Feel like it might be an average I was working scenario